In my experience, electric fencing is one of those things that people either love or they hate. And a lot of the time, I think those who are opposed to electric fence feel the way they do because they think it's unreliable or that it's overly complicated. Hi everyone, this is Andrew at Plainview Farm, and in today's video, I'm going to share some information that I think a lot of farmers who use electric fence will find very helpful. So hang around. So in this video, I'm going to go over a handful of ways that you can troubleshoot your electric fence to make sure that you're getting the most out of your fencing system. In any kind of diagnostic, the best place to start is with the simplest possible solution. So here's troubleshooting item number one. Does your energizer have power? Whether your fence charger is battery powered, solar powered, or it plugs into an outlet, losing power is obviously going to shut your system down. And honestly, I think a lot of people would be surprised how often electricians go out on service calls only to flip a breaker because the person who called them didn't check it to begin with. So again, you want to start with the simplest possible problem, which is to make sure that the unit has power. And with this, we'll call it step 1A. You want to make sure that all your connections are tight, whether it's the connections that go to the energizer, connections to cutout switches if you have them in your system, uh, connections to jumper wires, connections to your, your ground rods. You want to make sure that all of those are good and tight because a loose connection can cause you a great deal of problems. You may have heard the saying, loose lips sink ships. Well, here's another one for you. Loose connections can cause a failure in your electric fencing system. Did you expect it to rhyme? Now the next thing to do is make sure that your energizer is putting out the correct amount of voltage. And one of the best tools for that is a multimeter. So you just connect the positive lead to the positive terminal. So you just connect the positive lead to the positive terminal and the negative lead to your ground. When you do this, your energizer should read somewhere near the maximum voltage that it's rated for. Now, if the voltage is low, meaning half or less of the rated voltage for that energizer, then there's probably a fault inside the equipment itself, and chances are it's either going to need to be repaired or replaced. The third step is to make sure that your grounding system is doing its job. One of the most common problems with electric fencing systems is inadequate ground. And frankly, this is the reason that a lot of people who think electric fencing systems are unreliable think the way that they do. Most manufacturers have similar requirements whenever it comes to the grounding system for their energizers, which is three ground rods, usually galvanized because that's what the wire is, spaced 10 feet apart. And these ground rods are usually relatively close to the energizer. Now, something that a lot of people don't always consider is how dry the ground is, where they're putting the ground rods, and whether or not three ground rods themselves will truly be adequate. Three ground rods spaced 10 feet apart is basically just your starting point. You're most likely gonna need more than that if the ground does not stay at least somewhat moist. Now this may not be for everybody because my grounding system has a lot of overkill in it. I have multiple ground rods throughout the fencing system that runs around the perimeter of the property. And the reason that I have this is because I want to make sure that anything that touches this electric fence, specifically anything that goes through the electric fence, is going to feel the full force of the energizer. I have all of those ground rods tied back into the wires that are not hot in the fence, the ground wires. So again, whenever something touches both wires, the hot and the ground, they're going to complete that circuit and again, they're gonna feel the full force of the energizer. Now this works great if you're trying to not only keep animals in, but also keep predators out. Now dogs, foxes, coyotes, they don't wanna go through this fence because they know that they're gonna get hit no matter where they try to go through it at. I'll mention this as well, that we also have a whole lot fewer deer going through our property than we did before. When I first installed this fence, deer would often run through it and get shocked and I'd have insulators that would be popped off of the posts. I haven't had an insulator popped off of a post in months. And I think that's because in all reality, we've trained deer to go around our fence. So back to troubleshooting, there are a couple ways that you can test out your ground system on your electric fence. The first way is to actually drive a piece of pipe or rod or something like that into the ground and then connect it, tie it off, to one of the hot wires. Now you may have to drive that rod or piece of pipe 10 or 12 inches into the ground to make sure that you truly get it shorted out. And of course, if you're like me, you're probably gonna wanna shut the energizer off whenever you do this. I know there are some guys out there that uh, don't mind to work on electric fence whenever it's on, but I'm definitely not one of them. So once you've got it grounded out, you're gonna wanna turn the system back on and check the voltage. If you have more than 2000 volts going through the fence, 
you need more ground rods. Now another way you can test your ground system is to use a tester like this one and place it on a ground wire to see if there's any feedback coming through it. If you have more than three or four hundred volts coming back through your ground, again, you need more ground rods. In order for an electric fence to work the way that it's designed, the power that the energizer is sending out has to be sent back to the energizer through the ground completing the loop. If your ground system is not strong, then the loop is not gonna be strong and you're not gonna feel the full effect of the energizer. So here's maybe the best way that I can explain it. If you've ever seen a bird maybe perched on the top wire of an electric fence, you may wonder, well, how's that bird not getting shocked? Well, the bird's not getting shocked because the bird's not grounded. If the bird were to reach down and grab a wire that's not energized, the bird would most likely at least be partially grounded and then it would get shocked because it has completed the loop. So I'm gonna take just a moment here and ask you that if you're enjoying this video, please hit that like button so other folks can find it as well. And if you like this kind of content, please hit that subscribe button and the notification bell. That way you'll know when we post a new video. So if you have power to the unit, you're getting good voltage from the unit and your ground system is adequate, now you need to test the fence itself. So for this, you're gonna to wanna to make sure again that all of your connections are good and turn on your energizer and starting near the energizer, work your way out to the furthest point of your electric fencing system. And as you work your way out, every 50 feet or so, you're gonna to wanna to stop and see what kind of voltage reading you're getting. Now this fence tester or fault finder that I have will actually give you an arrow on the screen that will point you in the direction of your fault. It's not perfect, but it is definitely helpful. So as you go through the electric fence system, you wanna check the voltage of the hot wire and look for a voltage drop. Once the voltage drops, then you need to start working your way back to where it was higher and looking for something that could possibly be grounding out the fence. Now the fault or the short in the system can be caused by any number of things, whether it's a tree that may have fallen on the fence and has caused it to ground out, or a broken insulator that's allowed the fence to bump up against a, a metal post and ground out, or it's vegetation that has grown up into the fence that's causing it to ground out, or even wires that have been tangled together where an animal has run through the fence that's causing it to be ground out. Honestly, it can be any number of things that can cause your fence system to ground out. And I'll mention a quick side note here. It's good to buy high quality insulators that will last over time and it's good to keep your fences clean. Doing those two things are going to save you a lot of trouble whenever it comes to shorts or faults in the future. So as I said, the easiest way again to find those faults is to walk the fence and look for them. Now, if you have multiple zones in your fencing system, you can actually shut down certain areas and then turn them on one by one and see if you have a voltage drop that way. Doing that allows you to isolate your problem much faster. So now I'm gonna give you a bonus tip. All brands of energizers are rated in basically a couple ways. One way is acres. So an energizer will be rated for 80 or 100 acres. And the other way is miles. Now those energizers that are rated in acres can be a little bit harder to nail down in terms of what you're getting. So make sure that you understand what you're buying when you buy your energizer. Now the other energizers that are rated in miles, such as 40, 100, 200 miles, those are a little bit easier to figure but they can be rated a couple different ways themselves. That can be 40 or 100 miles of single wire fence, or that can be 40 or 100 miles of multiple wire fence. So again, you definitely wanna make sure you're aware of exactly how your energizer is rated. Sometimes a voltage drop, when everything else that I've talked about in this video is exactly what it's supposed to be, is nothing more than the result of an underpowered energizer. So you definitely wanna make sure that you're getting the energizer that is the appropriate size for the fencing system you have. Bonus tip number two, an energizer that's too big for your system can also cause you problems. So my best advice on that is to figure out exactly how much wire you have and then buy an energizer that's rated for your system. Of course, it is okay to buy one that's a little bit overpowered, especially if you're planning on adding fence later. So as always, I hope you enjoyed this video. We'll see you next time.